My name is Zach Hafen. I am a fourth year graduate student in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, studying astrophysics at Sierra. And I study how the universe forms and evolves. In particular, I ask, how can we explore the universe? And let me motivate that question. Because as it turns out, it's not exactly an easy question to answer. Let's figure out why. So, in particular also, I focus on galaxies, but let's go really close in first. Let's go, my version of close, Pluto. All right, Pluto, this beautiful image of Pluto, was taken a while back, it was taken a few years, um, and it took our space probe, New Horizons space probe, 10 years to get to Pluto and get this wonderful image, okay? And so if it took 10 years just to get to the edge of our solar system, let's talk about how long it would take to get to the edge of our own galaxy. So we're gonna do this diplomatically, so if everybody would mind raising their hand, okay? So everybody just raise a hand, okay? Now, if you think it would take another two years past the edge of our solar system for our space probe to reach the edge of our galaxy, go ahead and lower your hands now. If you think it would take another 10 years past the edge of our solar system to get to the edge of our galaxy, lower your hands now. Okay, how about 100 years? 100 years or less? 1,000 years or less? 10,000? 100,000? 1 million or less years to get to the edge of our galaxy. It's going the same speed it was before, conservation momentum, keep going. No change in speed, just same speed. All right, uh, 10 million years. 100 million, 1 billion years. Okay, I think everybody's pretty much down. And so I can reveal that's 500 million years, right? Way longer than most of you expected. And that's because distances in astronomy are just so vast that we have a hard time comprehending them. And that means that it's very difficult to explore the universe. We can't go out there and do it ourselves. I mean, let's put this in context. From the times from some of the first cave paintings to today is about 20,000 years. In other words, human civilization could rise and fall thousands of times over before we ever got a probe out there. So we have to do something different. Now, one of the things we can do is actually, fortunately, explore from our backyard. With telescopes, we can have the light reach us and use that to learn about the information about the universe instead. Alternatively, we can use even better telescopes, like the Hubble Space Telescope, and get even better images and more information. I do something a little bit different. I create virtual galaxies, computer simulated galaxies, that look and act like real galaxies. And by the end of today, you'll find out what it looks like to explore the universe using a virtual galaxy. Let's motivate that, though. Why would you want to? Imagine a cloud of gas floating in distant space. With the best telescopes available, you might be able to figure out how much this gas is made of hydrogen and helium, i.e. what it's made of, but you don't know exactly where it is or how fast it's moving. That's much more difficult. However, if you create this cloud of gas yourself as part of a virtual galaxy, you know all of this information. Now, there's a bigger question at hand here. Can we create a virtual galaxy? This is not easy, right? I'm not talking about simulating something small. I'm talking about creating an entire galaxy that we can analyze. Let's go ahead and break it down into nice, easy steps. What are the ingredients for a virtual galaxy? First, you need what galaxies are made of. Second, you need how galaxies change over time. And third, you need the necessary computational power to do it. Let's break down these down even further. What are galaxies made of? Well, they're made of gas mostly hydrogen and helium, as well as some other things. Gas like the air in this room, although not exactly the same composition. You also need stars. That's what people classically think of when they think of galaxies. And finally, you need something called dark matter. Dark matter is complex. I'm not going to go into details. All you need to know is that there's a lot of it, most of the matter in the universe, and that it's uh, attracting everything else via gravity only. OK, this is what's made of galaxy. You get this, you have most of the components. How about how it changes over time? Well, for that, we need gravity. You also need how gas behaves. In other words, hydrodynamics. The same stuff we use to learn, figure out how fish swim. And you additionally need some other information, like how do galaxies start in the first place? How do stars form? What happens as stars grow older, et cetera? OK, that's how galaxies change over time. Now, what about? what we're going to do to calculate this. You can't run on your laptop. As it turns out, you need things like Northwestern's Quest, 
our computing cluster, which we make good use of. We also make use of external resources. OK, let's review. The ingredients of a virtual galaxy, or a real galaxy, are how things, what it's made of, i.e. gas, stars, and dark matter, how it changes over time, i.e. gravity, hydrodynamics, and a few other details. And finally, we also need information about how to compute all this. So we need to use computing clusters. Now, here's a question for you. Do you think we've made a successful virtual galaxy if we throw all this together? Mm, I'm not sure I'm getting a sense. But the answer is quite not yet. OK? If you put all this together, you'll create a virtual galaxy that's missing cosmic winds, the scale of entire galaxies. So it turns out, you have to be very careful about the components you put in. What we're missing are realistic star-galaxy interactions. So this is a supernova explosion. It happens when supernova go off, which happens at the end of a star's lifetime, when they grow old and die. And these massive explosions can affect entire galaxies. And you have to be very careful about how you implement it. If you're not careful enough, you won't get a realistic galaxy. So the collaboration that I'm part of went and carefully implemented supernova feedback, as well as a few other details about how stars interact with galaxies. And the result is this. These are working virtual galaxies created by the FIRE collaboration. On the left, you will see one of those galaxies. And this is evolving over the course of billions of years in the course of a few seconds. Galaxies don't actually change this fast in real time. On the right is a real galaxy. In my opinion, they look pretty similar. And it's not just when you look at it and view it like this, but statistically, they're pretty good too. All right, let's keep continuing then. What happens now that we have a successful virtual galaxy? What can you explore? Well, there's a few things. For one, you can use it to figure out the history of gas in the past. In fact, my workers here at Northwestern recently figured out that about half the mass in our Milky Way most likely came from other galaxies recently. Uh, you can use it to figure out information about how dark matter and gas interact in weird, strange ways, and so much more. I'm only mentioning the very tip of the iceberg. So to put it all together, we can explore the universe with virtual galaxies. The reason why we need to do that is because the universe and galaxies are incredibly big. One solution is to use virtual galaxies. And fortunately, as time goes on, we get more and more accurate virtual galaxies and more and more information about the universe. Thank you.